Hello and welcome back. Today we've got another £200 worth of 10Ps of a hunt looking for the alphabet 10Ps, ideally ones we're still after. Uh, 2018, we just need the letter G for 2018, then we've finished our first ever book, which would be absolutely fabulous. In the meantime though, whilst we're still waiting for that one more coin, 2019, I swear it's been ages since we added to 2019, we've only got the letters C, E, G, H, J, K, L, M, O, R, U and V, so tons to find for 2019 still, so without further ado, let's get into these bags. So let's jump into some questions then, so these are questions from my um, uh, seal bag £2 coin giveaway, which was a fair while ago now. Um, our first question comes from Alan Poxton who says, is it like doing a workout taking all the coins back to the bank? Uh, this is a fab idea and good luck to everyone who enters. Uh, so yes, um, I take coins to and from the bank once, twice, maybe a week. Um, and yeah, they, they can get quite heavy. I, I don't take as much now that I don't do my live streams. Um, that's effectively half the amount of coins that I have to carry to and from. Although I could just about carry my entire week's worth of coins um, in the suitcase. Uh, however, I had to, when I got to the car, empty some of the bags, lift half of the 10 p's and the two uh, the pennies out because it's too heavy to carry or even lift into my boot at that point. But uh, now I can do it. Um, but um, mind over matter, I moved a fridge from a first floor flat down to the down to my car, fit it into the boot of a Ford Fiesta, and took it to the tip, carried it across the tip to uh, the where the where you put all the fridge freezers. So um, <laughs> mind over matter. Um, but thank you for your question, Alan. Um, Johnny Mizor says, great giveaway as always. Do you think they will redate the Team GB 50p to 2021 and will that make the 2020 dated coins loads more desirable? Uh, well, we've had the answer to that um, since you've asked that question. So yes, the 2020 Team GB Olympic 50p isn't isn't going to, isn't going to be uh, circulated or produced anymore. Um, other than the ones that are in the out in in the um, um, annual sets. Now next year there will be a 2021 dated coin with the same design just with a different year on the uh, reverse and I would imagine on the obverse as well if they're going to put the date on the obverse as well. Who knows. Um, but now do I think that coin is going to be really desirable and really valuable? The problem is now with collecting things if anyone gets a sniff that something could be rare, the slight sniff that something could be desirable People jump on it like they have done. I know people that have bought um, those annual sets or the Team GBs in, by the multiple. So I think that's going to have a different kind of effect. So take, for instance, the 2009 um, Olympic um, Athletics. So the, the, uh, the original Blue Peter designed one that was released in 2009. Um, there was a point where they just couldn't get rid of them and they would they were knock down prices. Um, and it's because people didn't realize the value that was going to come of it um, that uh, they are now worth a, a, a near eye fortune. So, oh, there we go, we got one. Hallelujah. N for NHS, and it is a 2018. Not one we need, but a welcome find nonetheless. I think the problem, like, 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 like I was saying, the problem with collecting, the problem with things like that nowadays, it's not just that, it's look at action figures and trading cards and things like that. What, uh, how many trading cards or whatever actually hold a decent value? Uh, the problem is you've got so many people that are um, like collectors like myself who maybe uh, buy, buy a lot of them anticipating prices going up. I don't do that because uh, when I uh, buy coins, it's purely for my collection, not to make as an investment to make a profit. Uh, I think I would get very upset and I would... Um, I don't, I, I have never priced it up, but I, I, I do wonder sometimes how much money I've lost buying the silver proofs that I bought because I buy them brand new from the Royal Mint, um, and a lot of them aren't worth what I paid for them, but they are to me though, because they're part of my collection, um, so that doesn't phase me in the slightest. But yeah, so uh, you've got collectors that will buy them for the f for, to sell in the future, uh, but then you've also got the people external to coin collecting who are just trying to turn a profit. Uh, the people that buy stuff in the room instantly, put it straight up on eBay, and charge double the price. So um, yeah, the problem is you've got loads of people acutely aware that they could potentially make profit from things. So I'm not sure that the 2020 Team GB or the um, Shield are going to be particularly valuable. Uh, but it, I guess it depends. I don't know if the Royal Mint stopped producing the coins. It depends how many annual, how many of the annual sets sold. If there's only 
I don't know twenty thousand that were sold. Man, oh man, that's going to be that. That will be worth some worth some money in the future. But um, if they if they sold a hundred thousand of them, good golly, that's a that's a fair few of them going out and about there. Especially because they're not then going into circulation to be mixed with circulating coins, all the other coins that are available. Um, I don't know. I just think. That, that is, this is my humble opinion, and I think we won't know for sure until at least five years down the line whether what I'm saying now is right or wrong. Imagine that if I am in five years' time, 2025, uh, knocking on Christmas 2025, still making these videos. I could be. I don't know. <laughs> I like to think. Um, but there we go. Andy Wilson says, Hi Christopher Clex, love watching your videos. Quick question, what's your favourite cheese? I like these sort of weird questions because I don't get, uh, these are always different questions than I've had previously. Um, my favourite kind of cheese. I'm not particularly fussy. Um, um, I like sort of a slight chilliness to cheese, like a little spice. I don't like things that, that like set my mouth on fire and I'll be tasting it for the next fortnight. Uh, clearing out my sinuses is not what I want from my cheese. Um, but yeah, um, to be fair, I don't think I, I don't really like really pungent, gross cheeses, smelly cheeses. No, thank you. Um, I don't want to be eating mouldy cheese, thank you. But uh, other than that, I'm not particularly picky. Uh, KD Show O says, "Is there more than one type of error coin with the navy centen centenary?" I think that's a that's an autocorrect error. Centenary two pound coins. So yeah, the, the navy centenary. There's a full flag arrow which looks like a flag, and there's a partial flag arrow which looks like a bump. As uh, so there's two different variants you can find. There are, again, differing opinions on them. Uh, I class them as errors because it's a very low minted coin, and of that low mintage, there aren't, there can't be, an awful lot of those um, variants. Um, da, 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 da. So people are saying thank you for the giveaways. We've got like Stephen Ward Brennan, uh, Average Gamer YouTube. Oh, here we go. Stephen Brown says, Hi, Christopher, love your videos. My question is, what do you do for a living? Or do you make enough money from your videos? So I don't I don't, I don't live off of my uh, YouTube revenue. Don't you worry about that. Uh, we, I am very much small fry in the great pool that is YouTube. Um, I mean, I could probably just about scrape by, but uh, I don't want to just scrape by. I want, I want to be able to enjoy um, buying nice coins and things like that. So um, yes, I, I work full time uh, in addition to making these videos. Um, I don't like talk about talking about what I currently do for work um, for my own personal reasons. I've, uh, I, you, I share a lot of my, of my life with you guys. I spend a lot of my life putting these videos and things together, but there are some things that are personal to me and I'm, I've, I've always been mindful that there are lines between Christopher and Christopher Collects and um, yeah, that, that's one of those. But I'll talk about what I previously did. Prior to where I'm working now, I was a bank manager um, for a bank that is going through some tricky times now and I, it seems like I got out at the perfect time. I love the people there, but uh, the job was so stressful in the end, I had to jump ship before um, I had a nervous breakdown. That's <laughs> how I felt like it's going. Uh, prior to that, um, what did I do before that? I was at university and I worked part time in a news agents. Um, and uh, the only other jobs I worked, my very first job was, um, other than being a, doing a paper round, uh, was I worked as a cleaner in an MOT garage uh, for I think it was four hours on a Saturday every week and uh, that was an experience <laughs> but it, it actually that job gave me the, it was my first sort of regular wage and I saved up and bought my first drum kit with that with that with that wage so I was I was quite happy with that oh I went to Woolworths as well I forgot about Woolworths that was my job after working at the MOT garage and that was my first sort of real um, I don't know, regular sort of part-time job, and I loved it there. It was it's a fantastic shop, but it did it did learn me a lesson: never, ever, ever eat pick and mix. They're dis it's disgusting. The things, the horror stories I could tell you of sweets being licked and put back in, or people whilst they're trying to get sweets sneezing into them. Ugh. Don't do it, people. Don't do it. It's gross. Um, Nick West says, "Hope you and your family are safe and well. Uh, they are. Thank you, and I hope all of your families too." Uh, question: Do you follow cryptocurrencies? If you do, what coin is your favourite? I don't follow crypto uh, crypto countries, <laughs> cryptocurrencies in the slightest. I have. I don't understand how they work. Um, the whole it's all blockchains and deep freeze and not so deep freeze and. I've read so much about it in um, on, in the news that I just I just still don't understand it, and um, it's too up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down that um, 
I think it's just it's it's less of investment, more of a gamble. Um, so yeah, I don't. It's not something I'm in, in, even in sort of slightly inclined to be interested in. But um, yeah, I've, I I know there is um, Bitcoin and Ethereum and Ribbon. Ribbon is that one? The problem is that, again, there's so many, and I don't. I have no idea what anchors the value of this cryptocurrency. Um, and you, I heard recently, there was, it was, actually wasn't so recent, probably about a year ago, um, a cryptocurrency where um, the person in charge of the blockchain or whatever, all of the files are hidden, in, encrypted on his laptop or in a safe, I can't remember what it was, I think it's a laptop, that nobody can access. And that it, there is like over a hundred million pounds worth of um, whatever cryptocurrency this is, locked in that laptop that no one's ever going to be able to access again. Madness, right? Anyway. Um... George S. says, Hi Christopher, how long does it normally take to complete an entire set of 50ps with your method of getting coins from your bank? I'm a fairly new collector. Well, February, uh, for February, I'll have been doing this for two years, and uh, though three years, I'll be doing it three years, and I am uh, very close to finishing my third book, so take from that as you will. Um, <laughs> the problem is you can get stuck on certain coins, so my second book, book number two, I didn't get a Kew Gardens, I've drawn an end to it after an absolute megaton of episodes and so I've, just, uh, so I've started my book the third but I've got a Q Guns for that third book now so yeah it's, it's, it's very very lucky luck based you can you could be on a an absolute roll of luck and then find nothing for or nothing new for absolutely just like a like as a situation at the moment to be fair but um yeah I think the, the enjoyment is finding anything uh, so any 50p hunt I find Olympic that's a that's a success to me even if it's not the Olympic I'm after even if it is just Paralympic archery um it's still a massive success uh, Emily Art says, such an, uh, uh, such an awesome idea for the coins, Christopher. I'm currently working my £2 collection and there are and are looking for some Commonwealth games, Scotland and Northern Ireland. My question for you is, what is your all-time favourite video game? Um, so video game is, was, was a massive part of my life. Um, ooh, up until, I don't know, two, three years ago. But it, it, probably when I started making um, videos for this channel because that swallowed up a lot of my free time. Um, but and uh, it doesn't help that I was sort of stung by the last few games that I bought. Um, I got Battlefront 2 and I was absolutely loathed and upset with the way that game worked uh, to the point where I refused to buy anything EA until EA loses the Star Wars franchise. That's my own personal convictions there. Um, and uh, what was the one before that? No Man's Sky, which I was told about. I thought, wow, that looks amazing. So I read up and I was like, this is going to be this is going to be mind bending. This is going to be so good. And I bought it and it was it was amazing for about a day. And after a day, I realized this is a lot of repetition going on here. This is um, although it's exciting and there's lots of scope, there's only so much scope to this game. Um, so I was I, I did get disappointed by that and stopped playing it. So, yeah, the last two major games that I've bought or big release games that I bought um, kind of stung me a bit. But prior to that, I, I played Call of Duty with my friends. And I, again, I, I fell out of love with that because I just realized I was paying £60 every year to play a different variant of a game that just frustrated me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, prior to that, the game I played the most over the course of all my all, all, all my life was... Um, the MMO RuneScape. I've, 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 I dread to think how many hours of my life I've sunk into that game. Um, I haven't played it much re recently. Uh, I think the last, the big lockdown we had earlier in the year was the last time I played it, sort of a fair bit. But uh, no, it was. It's a. Uh, it's 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 such a great game. But the problem is, it evolves so quickly. So new, so much new stuff comes in that I just can't keep up with it, keep pace with it. Uh, the ideal game for me is a game I can play for 30 minutes and then come back in a couple of days or. A, MMOs aren't that way inclined. You've got to play for hours every day to even just keep on top of things. But uh, it's a, I'm sure it's a game that I've sh I'm sure I will never quit in, in its entirety, and will probably end up going back at some point uh, because I've, I made so many good friends there, and I tried other MMOs along the way. But I started playing that in 2006, 2007, um, and played it up, well up to fairly recently, and not, not as much as I used to. I used to wake up, log on, play with my friends online, go to bed, wake up, play with my friends online, go to bed. But um, yeah, um, but no, I'm, I, I see games advertised and I think, wow, that looks amazing. Uh, the, the latest one was the Star Wars Squadrons. And I just think that would be so cool because as a kid, we used to have the X-Wing and TIE Fighter PC games and I absolutely loved them. So the idea of playing them in virtual reality would be so cool. But um, virtual reality and me, we don't mix very well. <laughs> That's a story for another day. 
Um, Adam Aquil says, my question is, how do you know the specific place to put all the coins in your collect coin collection book? Because I'm an amateur collector and I would really like to know. Also, I like the video and I've been subscribed for a while. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the way that I organize my coins in my books is date order uh, uh, and then alphabetical for the Olympics in the middle. Uh, my recommendation, if you want to know, you can, you can pause the videos and see where the coins are. Alternatively, it might be easier. Go to Change Checker. I'm not sponsored by them, but um, it's a website that I've used for as long as I've been having. I've been running this channel for the as the uh, wealth and resource of information that they are. Um, they, they they list all the coins. You can search all the 50p's. They'll display them in. Um, in date order and that's the order that i stick them into my book so yes knowledge is power with coin collecting so yeah definitely do that uh last question comes from R rich swift it says wow another great giveaway my question is the blue or the red pill i'm wearing red but i do like blue but i really like purple and purple is red and blue together so maybe i go for both that could be a good idea be greedy <laughs> right anyway uh, with that bit enough being said let's get back to the coins well there we go our finds for today we've got an isle of man 10 pence which is always a welcome find i love coins from the isle of man 1992 very good vintage that one and also we got an alphabet 10p we've got the letter n for nhs 2018 though not what we need for one of the books but a lovely lovely find any alphabet 10p is a success if we're lucky just to find one or two or maybe even three uh, at a push but um, there we go well as ever what that leads me to do now is thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you next time for more coins bye <laughs>